Hello and welcome to another drive-in double feature. I'm Ryan. I'm Nathan. And this is the podcast where we talk about two movies a week every Tuesday and Thursday. But before we get into anything, we have a Patreon over at patreon.com slash drive and double feature podcast. You know, if you're driving on I-95 going north, you might see our billboard right there, like right by exit 17. Next to the says, Buckies? Yeah, it says drive and double feature. And... Mm-hmm. It's got a picture of Nathan and I up there, you know, it says, you know, check out our Patreon. That's specific, not our podcast, just <laughs> our for Patreon. the Patreon. And that's, that's where it is. It may, we have there on the billboard, you know, check out our flick chart flag, check out our fun conversations, mm-hmm. check out all the fun games and quizzes that we do. I mean, we had to pay a lot for that text. So, I mean, cause we, they pay by the, yeah, they got paid by the letter up there. So, yeah. And it's a face reveal people. You got to drive on 95 to get a face reveal. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we had to put the whole website in there, HTTP colon <laughs> slash slash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah. whole patreon.com slash. www.patreon. It's uh-huh. all there. You can make sure you got to take a picture of the billboards and make sure you memorize the, the URL up there. But yeah, yeah, anyway. you do the, do the, do you got the notepad and the pin, honey? I need to write that down. <laughs> yeah. And it says up there in the in fine print, it's only five dollars a month, but it doesn't affect any regular content. Mm-hmm. But today we have 1978, The Silent Partner, and that is directed by Daryl Duke and an uncredited direction by the screenwriter of this movie, Curtis Hansen. Now, if that name sounds familiar, it's because he has directed a lot of thrillers. Oh, not the boy band. Damn it. What? Hansen. <laughs> Hansen. <laughs> no. no, yes, of course. It was the Hanson brother's dad. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. He, you know, he had produced a lot of talent. <laughs> but anyway, uh, no, Curtis Hanson is a uh, screenwriter. Uh, probably his most famous, famous movie is L.A. Confidential. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's also done the other movies like The Bedroom and uh, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, he uh, he was the screenwriter for this movie. This is like an independent movie from Canada. And allegedly the, the director of this movie had creative differences uh, with the direction of how the movie was going. So Curtis Hansen stepped in and actually directed the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. That's actually, <clears throat> I, didn't, I didn't know that. That's usually not a sign of a good movie, but um, but we'll leave no. it up to you. <laughs> no, yeah, that. And, but yeah, I uh, this movie is a uh, starring Elliot Gould, so that was kind of like my rationale. Well, I saw it on your watch list, Nathan, so that's how I'm doing my picks this this <laughs> month is just picking movies off your watch list. Wait, hold on, but it's August. Yeah, it, well, yeah, we just think about Elliot Gould it, in August anyway that it just happened it was a happy coincidence yeah okay cool cool i yeah, was I looking mean, i was looking at all your gold movies on your watch list i probably have a good amount <laughs> yeah but uh he's the star of this movie um he plays a kind of mild-mannered uh, banker mm-hmm. and he works at <laughs> this bank that's in the mall which is like in the inside of a mall like a shop mall and... and that like blew my mind because like i i don't think i've ever seen that before because it's like a mall mall it's not like a shopping like you know it's like when you think of like going up escalators lobbies like everything no it's just a bank in the mall yeah i mean i, I was thinking about that like can you imagine if you have to like go cash a check or deposit something you have to like go to the mall park walk into the mall and then go find the bank yeah like, how and, much yeah. effort that would be like, it, like i don't like damn it i'd have to go to the bank I'd go yeah to the I, mall and i did kind of look into this mall because it was because the mall is kind of you could even say that the mall in this movie the eaton center mall is a character let's be honest you could you could, you could. It, it all takes place in this mall so i was interested in it and at the time in the 70s to the 80s it was considered one of the largest malls in Canada. So this place, like I can imagine like some giant city center. You got to find this bank 
Do you think there were other chains competing for each other in this mall? There might have been multiple banks in the mall. I can imagine, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that's really interesting. Right. <laughs> it, and it's a pretty decently... I mean, it's not a humongous bank. I mean, it's like... Imagine like the Apple store in your mall. Like that's mm -hmm. what that, it's about the size of that. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's got a vault and everything. It's got a vault with lock boxes and everything for, for all the clients. But uh, the uh, other thing was just like, you know, all the staff that works there. And one of the staff members is John Candy, which yeah. that was, I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah, because I did read a little bit about this movie before I got in, and it said an un or not not uncredited, a small role from J John Candy. And usually, when you see that, it's like he plays like somebody who comes in and is like, "I'm ah, fifty bucks, please," and that's it. That would be his scene. But he's actually like a cast member. He has some scenes. Uh, he's actually a coworker in this movie. Yeah, and he has like a little plot. To yeah, the movie he does. Too. He's got he got a little story arc to himself, yeah. but um. Anyway, there's a, uh, like I said, he, he kind of plays like a real mild manner. Elliot Gould plays a real mild manner bank teller. And he has a crush on one of the uh, other employees that works there, but she's really not that interested in him because she, she doesn't really seem that interested or she doesn't think mm -hmm. he's that interesting. But um, the mall Santa like walks into there or like, he's kind of like, like real shifty and like, mm -hmm. There's just something about him that Elliot Gould like immediately picks up. Like that guy doesn't seem right, and yeah. he uh, notices that there was a note left on the floor that said like I've got a gun, Please give me all the money in the bank. So Elliot Gould like is able to piece together that this Santa Claus was going to rob the bank, yeah. but then chickened out at the last minute. And it's all because like he goes out there and the the Santa's like taking money. And he, on his sign, the G's are written really weirdly. And the checkbook little slip that he found, the G's are written exactly the same. So yeah, he makes this scheme off of that to that he's going to get something out of this too. Yeah. And what he does is uh, Elliot, so Elliot Gould knows that the bank is going to be robbed. And mm -hmm. he knows it's probably going to be done by the mall Santa Claus. So Elliot Gould brings like a bag with him and actually puts like the bank's money into the into his like little lunchbox. Yeah, it's a has. Superman lunch lunchbox. Yeah. So when uh the bank robber shows up who actually turns out to be played by Christopher Plummer. Yeah. And, and they come in there and he's like, "All right, he does the whole bit like give me all the money or I'm going to shoot you. I got a gun right here in my pocket." And Elliot Gould's like, "Sure, no problem." And he's like, "Elliot Gould's taking a sweet time because he wants all the money to be removed so that way Elliot Gould could take his own money. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, he does trip the alarm intentionally. So that way he does, the guy gets run, has to run away and they do chase after him. And, you know, they're kind of like at first to Elliot Gould, like, why, why, why didn't you say anything? Like, why didn't you like hit the emergency button right away? He's like, I don't know. I just I was so scared. That's one thing I really, enjoyed about this movie is uh i mean you know i i do like elliot gould as an actor you know mm -hmm. he's i don't think he's bad you know i actually enjoy his performance but this one is probably like one of my favorite of his performances that he's ever done because yeah. so many times you think in this so like the whole point of it is that elliot gould tries to trip up the bank and steal the money and like kind of go on the lamb himself now in my head, like what I was thinking, you know, he's like, he was going to be real scared and nervous and shaky mm -hmm. throughout the whole time. And like, this guy was going to come like after him for the money, but that doesn't, I mean, it, that does happen, but Elliot Gould's character is that he is like a brilliant genius. And yeah, he's <laughs> extremely smart, but cool and calm and quiet. He, that's his like almost superpowers. He's able just to like, he doesn't talk too much. You know, he stays back and kind of like works things out in his head and you can tell. And like, yeah, there's something about it because it's it's like a really smart everyman too because he does feel like just like an everyday guy and he hides behind that. It, it's really interesting. No, I agree. Elliot Gould is fantastic in this movie. He plays it so well. Um, and let me tell you, the setup to this whole movie, 
I think is such a good, interesting setup to a movie. Like, I think that's just like so much fun. Because, you know, I watched um I watched Psycho again not long ago. And, it, you know, this movie reminds me a lot of Hitchcock. And it's very Hitchcock setup. Like, oh, I, I see a crime happening. I'm going to I'm going to work in on that crime and I'm going to get my own here. And then it's kind of what happens after that. And it's honestly just it's a really fun uh, plot for a movie. Yeah, you really don't expect her to go in that direction and Mm -hmm. and then once you kind of piece together like like i've said before because what happens is is that elliot gould gets interviewed on television and they ask him like how much money was stolen and he says like over forty thousand dollars or something like that and Mm -hmm. christopher Plummer knows that he didn't get all the money because like Elliot Gould like didn't give him all the money because he's like wait a minute those numbers don't match up there that's not how much I stole (laughs) yeah so he he immediately knows that Elliot Gould like took the money for himself like pocketed like the remainder and and this and this bank robber like despite him not just cutting his losses and just moving on he's like I want that money back and they established very early that this guy is a complete psychopath. Yeah, he's a psychopath. What a weird scene. The scene where he like takes the woman in a sauna and just decides, oh, I'm going to cut. She cuts. He cuts her nipple and then like steps on her face and like it, he kills her. Right. Doesn't just beat mm-hmm. her up. He, she kills her and he's just like walks away. He's like, I'm going to get my money back now. So he's just like a complete like evil person. Yeah. Complete and tutter like sadistic psycho. And mm-hmm. And, you know, at first, like, like I said, like how I thought the movie was going to play out, it kind of does play out like that in a way, because Mm -hmm. um, Elliot Gould's, you know, kind of really on edge the whole time. Mm -hmm. And Christopher Plummer is actually able to track down where he lives. Mm -hmm. And he starts like leaving threatening messages, letters. And there's like one point where he like, tells him like, hey, like, I'm going to give you like a day to give me back my money before I'm going to come up there and take it myself. Mm-hmm. And so you're, you're kind of thinking like Elliot Gould's going to be like, goes be like Mr. Scared, timid guy and go on the run. But mm-hmm. instead what happens is that Elliot Gould kind of turns the table on the guy. And cause he thinks Elliot Gould's up there and he like runs up there. And then Elliot Gould calls him from the payphone. He's like, Hey, go f- <laughs> yeah. no, that's what i like about it because it's all you know just like you said it's you would think it'd be like this nerdy guy who gets in over his head right like oh now i have this psycho after me but no it's like it's a battle of the wits it's like you got an eat like this psychopath and then you got this like brilliant guy that will do anything to keep his money um because he hides it really well he hides like the piece of paper for the slip in a book and he actually hides that money in a, in a safe de- safety deposit box in the bank and he hides the key in a jar of jelly so like you know in a place that nobody's gonna think of where it's at also really gross when he sticks the key in and he starts licking his uh, yeah. fingers so <laughs> it's like come on like, like all that like that metal metal keys or <laughs> that jam yeah, that's not gonna taste good yeah um, but there's a really fun scene where Elliot Gould, like, because he talks about this later in the movie, but he just becomes like a whole different person when this money is like in, in here because he steals a car from another, like from like a, a delivery car, drops it off where Christopher Plummer's living and calls the cops. Is like, hey, this guy, you just stole the car. I saw him go in there and gets Christopher Plummer arrested. And he's which he thinks means the end of everything. Well, that that's the thing, because they actually do ask Elliot Gould. They're like, so this guy's got a history of like a criminal record here. Was he the guy that robbed the bank? And mm-hmm. Elliot Gould, you know, he he's like, I don't think so, because he knows if Christopher Plummer gets fingered for the uh, bank robbery that he would talk about Elliot Gould. You know, Elliot would be like, yeah. hey, you know, he's the one that stole your money. So it's like really like cool, calm and collected. It's just like, no, I don't, I've never seen that man before in my life. And just mm-hmm. um, so they, Christopher Plummer does go out of the movie for a little bit because he has to go to prison for stealing the car. And yeah. at first, Elliot Gould is, you know, like, his whole demeanor and personality has changed because you know he did have like a like he was trying to like romance the mm-hmm. uh, his coworker, but that didn't end up panning out. 
and yeah they they kind of have a relationship the the whole movie like a kind of on and off weird relationship yeah they do and but months and months have passed by at this point and Mm -hmm. elliot gould's father dies Mm -hmm. and uh he and at his dad's funeral he like ends up falling in love with his nurse like his dad's nurse and they Mm -hmm. like go on dates and stuff like that and you're really not I, like at first, I was just kind of like, "This is like a really odd turn for this movie because it's like <laughs> yeah. it just turns it just turned into like a, a romance movie," mm-hmm. and so I was kind of like not sure of what what to expect from that. And then um, come to find out, uh, it turned out that um, she has end up was that uh, was Christopher Plummer's girlfriend, mm-hmm. and she was trying to get the information out of Elliot Gould and like steal the money back from him so that way she could give it to christopher Plummer. like they were like able to work this whole angle but the other part is is that elliot gould knew the whole time that she worked for him for <laughs> yeah Plummer. you know because there's that line where he's like where he he just he knows he's like like he just comes out and it's just like yeah i mean it was too much of a coincidence you know you just randomly met me in the park and everything like it makes sense but what's even crazier is that the both of them, like Elliot Gould, actually kind of woos her in a way? It's it's really surprising. They actually build up a romance in this. Yeah, movie. Uh, yeah, they actually fall in love with each other, and like they they plan to take the money and run. Yeah, which I yeah. Once again, this movie just takes all these. It's definitely a subvert your expectations movie, right? Like it sets you up for something and then does a good job of taking it in another direction and that's actually one of my favorite scenes in the movie because they actually lose the key to the safety deposit box because his uh his maid cleans out the refrigerator so the jelly ends up going to the dump and he loses it so they have to hit like uh to to hatch a plan to get the safety deposit box so they have her pretend to be somebody who lost their key and they but they have to do it whenever um the love interest played by uh Susanna York isn't there so they have like this really tight tight time frame to get the safety deposit box out it's really tense it's really it's a really solid scene oh i love that scene because the whole time too is that uh like even though like they fall in love with each other him and uh i should him and elaine the the the, the christopher Plummer's girlfriend even though they fall in love with each other they still don't like trust each other at all Mm -hmm. like they like they're just waiting for the other one to betray each other because they go in there. They op- they're able to get the safety deposit box opened, and then he's like, "Oh well, now that you see all that's there, ma'am, I'm sure you don't want to take any of that with you. You'd rather it be in the safety deposit box, right?" And mm-hmm. she starts casually just putting it in her bag, and he's just, like, "What the hell are you doing?" Type of thing, and yeah. she's like, "Don't you trust me?" He's like, "We had a plan." exactly and he keeps saying extremely loud you want to put that back in your safety deposit box right you're going to put it back but she ends up doing it she actually because the way a a normal movie like this would go she would actually end up screwing him over in the end um but there's that that other scene whenever christopher Plummer does come back he does make bail and they're not able to get away with the money and she's kind of getting all up in his face. And whenever he's in Elliot Gould's apartment and she's like, yeah, we we had sex right here on this carpet. And it was the best time of my <laughs> life. Just like pissing off Christopher Plummer. Yeah, um, like she's willing to throw away this entire past for Christopher because she's like that in love with Elliot Gould now. It's so funny. And and then she she gets killed. Uh, Very yeah, violently. Beheaded. And I guess that's a character trait from Elliot Gould. It, the movie sets him up like he's a really boring guy and all he loves is fish. And he's kind of that way because he does have an obsession with fish. Uh, and that's what he wants. He's like, whenever they said, uh, if you stole that much money, what would you get? And he says, a puffer fish. So, <laughs> weirdo. Yeah. That's, so they go in there and Christopher Palmer smashes uh, Elliot Gould's fish tank with her mm-hmm. head and it's- then and pales her neck on like broken glass of the aquarium and yeah. it's like, it's a very gruesome scene um but what i do want to say like during that whole scene with the safety deposit box um Susanna york uh is like coming back from her lunch break and elliot gould doesn't want her to come in and see this because mm-hmm. 
you know, she's the one that's in charge of the safety deposit boxes. So she does not want her to see her coming in or like have to be a witness to this. So even though like they kind of like had like a little, like they made out for a little bit, like it ended up panning out between them. And then all of a sudden, like Elliot Gould just starts like, I, I just got to kiss. And he just starts like kissing her. Yeah. And he's like, and she's like, Oh, well, that was nice. Like, can we talk about this tonight? And he's like, Ooh, I got this thing. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. like, and she starts she's like, crying. She, she's yeah. like, what are you doing to me? Well, yeah. She's like, what the hell? Like, I, what, like, what is this game you're playing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I actually kind of felt bad for that character because she oh, gets yeah. screwed over because she, I mean, Elliot Gould's just using her at points in the movie or just like sets things because that's what happened earlier. They kind of get close, but then Elliot Gould's like, eh, no, I can't. I got other things to worry about. Yeah. And because when he goes back to his apartment and he sees Elaine murdered mm -hmm. and like he sees her sever head in the fish tank, you know, Susanna York calls him and she's like, Oh, like I'm really upset. Well, he's like, I'm sorry, my my fish tank is broken, and she's like, Oh my god, I'm so sorry, that's terrible. He's like, Well, maybe it's not the worst thing, and then she's like, Wait, what? <laughs> like, because he's like so distracted, and mm -hmm. he's like, uh, I gotta call you back, <laughs> and yeah, and he's able to dispose of the body because he knows there's a construction site being built and they're pouring concrete. Yeah, so the dead <laughs> the dead body gets and like Christopher Plumber is like because they have like a little meeting between the two where they're like. Christopher Palmer's yeah. like, I'm going to get my money back. Like, I don't, I, I'm, this is going to happen type yeah, of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that the first time they physically meet in the movie? Because every yeah, other that... time they like are behind mirrors or something like that. I think there was something about that scene where they actually see each other and they don't yell at each other. They don't fight. It's a real, it's a really calm scene. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. They just, like, yeah. They, they, they're kind of like, I guess, like, you know, they're, they're more, uh they, they have a lot of respect for each other i think <laughs> yeah because they've both been able to fight for this long and i think yeah they both are like yeah it's time to end this we need this needs to be over um, yeah so basically what happens is like ellie gould says like all right just come to the bank rob it again i'll give you the money and then that'll be the end of it mm -hmm. and yeah. so Christopher Plummer shows up there, but this time he's in full drag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, it's, he goes in and uh, Christopher Plummer ends up getting uh, shot because Elliot Gould trips the, trips the alarm like right away this time. Exactly. And, and they're, and they're on high alert because of the last robbery. So I, like the, the security guard just shoot, shoots first, doesn't ask any questions. Right in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's and there's like still tenseness because he gets shot and there's a really long scene of him walking up the escalator because he's like he's bleeding out. And he's barely walking, but he he's still alive. And I think Elliot Gould is like, this only works if he dies. He needs to die. And he dies a very slow death, but he does yeah. die. Well, well the, the funny part is, is like the security guard runs over to Christopher Plummer as he's dying. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's like he he gave me the bank's money or like he had the bank's money like he's like well of course he did what else was he supposed to give you pal like <laughs> yeah and, which is so funny and then he just died like that was his dying words he was trying to like rat him out uh, yeah confess about elliot gould Mer like uh robbing the bank and <laughs> it was just like whatever yeah. buddy yeah, and it's funny. So a movie like this, I almost expected that Elliot Gould wouldn't get away with it. I yeah, thought it, I, I thought, thought it was going to be a downer ending, but no, Elliot Gould he's he he gets out with the money, and he gets the girl too in the end. That was a little like oh, uh, I thought it was a little kind of forced. Was, yes, yeah, was was him like okay? Well, we have to have it. He's got to have the girl at the end. Like we can't yeah. just have it where he's just has nobody so Susanna York is able to piece all this stuff together because she finds Elliot Gould's briefcase because it's full of money mm -hmm. and then she's just like we could just go run off together like we don't have to do anything it's like works for me like just... <laughs> exactly <laughs> and so then that's just how the movie ends but you know like I had this movie is actually really great I like this oh, movie a lot it's a fantastic and, movie I really like, I really enjoyed it <laughs> 
Like I was totally surprised, like because I thought it was going to be kind of decent, you know, maybe. But I was like, like, no, this like movie's way better than some of like some of like actual thrillers out there. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, no, it's it's actually I, uh, surprisingly tense. Does a lot of different things, and like you said, Elliot Gould is, you know, Elliot Gould usually plays Elliot Gould. I like it, and I always usually do like him, but he's actually really good in this movie. It it, it works all around. Yeah, and then Christopher Plummer plays a great psychopath as well. <laughs> of so, course, yeah. Uh, it's uh, just a really great movie where it's just a battle of the wits type of thing, and it just took in a direction that I didn't expect it to, and I it it won me over for that. So uh, mm-hmm. uh, for me, I give it a very hot recommend. This movie should be talked about more. Like it's it's, uh, it's a really great movie that should be up there with a lot of other great thrillers that are out there. Totally agree. Fantastic movie. I uh, I highly recommend you watch it. Mm-hmm. Terrific. Well, that's going to do it for this week. So, Nathan, I'm sure you already had your pick ready to go, so let's hear it. All right. Well, Ryan, this goes hand in hand, so why not do it? We are going to be talking about 1976s, but wasn't released till 2010s. Gone with the Pope. Yes, we're doing two Duke Mitchell movies in a row. Let's just do it. Let's, <laughs> Duke let's, Mitchell month. Yeah, let's do it. Well, Duke Mitchell month is only two movies. So, uh, so yes, we were going to be talking about Gone with the Pope. Yeah, and that movie is streaming over on Tubi. But right. Ryan, what are we talking about on Thursday? Well, Nathan, we actually, I'm going to be doing a recommendation myself this week. Oh, so cool. For the next week. Uh, it's from alex one of our favorite uh ones mm-hmm. he wanted us to talk about another one so i'm gonna do this one that he actually recommended and we're gonna be talking about ricky O, the story of ricky and that awesome. one is free on the uh, internet archive awesome i'm excited to watch it well perfect we're gonna have a great time talking about that but If you want to give us your thoughts and opinions about the podcast, please email us over at driving double feature podcast at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on X at DIDF pod. And once again, check out the Patreon at patreon.com slash driving double feature podcast. But until next time, until next time. (laughs) 